Okay, so now I have this uh, Sentinel-2 tile downloaded to my local machine. And as you can see, it downloads as a compressed file, so a .zip file. So before you can do anything, you're going to have to uncompress the data. So to do that, um, I want a Windows machine, so there's a build-in tool to do that, so you can just do extract all. Um, also, 7-zip is a good option. Um, it's, it's free, so you can download it um, if you want. Um, I'm just going to click on extract all, because that seems to work fine in this case. We'll do an extract there. Okay, so that's going to extract out the data to a folder. And then we'll go in here and look at the, the folder structure a bit before we get started with uh, actually analyzing the data. Okay, so here's the folder. I'm going to go into here. And you can see there's a couple different subfolders. So we have granule, um, image data. Those are all of your image bands. And you can see there's some additional ancillary data layers here. So what we're mainly going to work with is the image data, so from this image data folder. Okay, so I already have Arc Pro opened, so um, I'm just created a new blank project. So before we do anything else, let's go in and add a few of the bands so we can see what they look like. So I'm going to go to my folder, wherever it is, there it is. Um, and then we want to go to this folder, and then that's our new, oh, actually do a refresh. Sometimes when you make changes to folders, and they're not, like after you've opened up Arc, it doesn't see the changes. So I'm going to do a refresh. Yep, there we go. So um, if you don't see what you're looking for, that might be the issue. Okay, so we go to granule, and then image data there, and those are our bands. So before we add anything in, we kind of want to know what these actually are. So I pulled up a, let's just open up this image here. This is just on the uh, Landsat NASA webpage here. Okay, so this is just comparing the Sentinel data to some of the other, um, the, for some of the Landsat sensors. So this is the Landsat 8 sensors, OLI and TIERS, and then the uh, Landsat 7 ETM+. Plus. So bands 1, 9, and 10 are kind of like ancillary data. Um, if you, oh, I have that, there we go. So band 1 is this coastal aerosol, band 9 is water vapor, and then 10 is this cirrus cloud band. Um, we're not really going to work with those, uh, but they're good ancillary data if you need them. 2, 3, and 4 are your visible bands, so uh, blue, green, red. 5, 6, and 7 are red edge bands. 8 is a near IR band. And then we have this 8A, which is like a thinner near IR band. And then out here we have 11 and 12, which are your short wave IR bands, which you can see occur in atmospheric windows. Right? So what we're going to mainly work with are, are all the bands other than 1, 9, and 10. So what we'd like to do now is actually bring some of those in to look at and then make a composite out of them, which is a, as a multi-band image. Um, and just as another note, this just lists out all the bands here. So you can see the band names, the central wavelength and micrometers there, and the resolution. One thing that's um, interesting with Sentinel data is that the bands are not actually all the same resolution. So, for example, these kind of ancillary bands, 1, 9, and 10, they're at 60 by 60 meter pixel. Um, we are visible in our near our 10, and everything else is at 20. Okay, so let's add in 2, 3, 4, and 8. So right now they're not stacked up as a multiband image, they're just separate files. So we're going to read in our um, 10 meter data first. Okay, so there we go. So all the bands came in. Uh, zoom in here a little bit so we can see some detail. There we go. So this is a city here. I think this is Zurich. Um, and this is showing 8, so this is the near IR band. And let's turn that off. This is the 
red band, four, the green band, three, and the blue band, two. Okay, so let's say that we actually wanted to do something with it, that we wanted to actually stack this up so we have a single image that we can work with. So in Arc, the way to do that is with the composite band tool. So I'm going to open up the toolbox here. We'll do composite, composite bands. It's in data management. And let's go into our folder. And we'll just add in the bands that we want. Image data, and then we want 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8A. 11 and 12. And we'll hit OK. And make sure the order is right for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 a, 11 and 12. So one thing to note is in ARC, when you're doing a composite and the bands have different band uh, resolutions, spatial resolutions, um, it's going to use the pixel size of the first band. So this is a 10 meter band, which means our output will be 10 meters, which means it's going to kind of like down sample or I guess I guess technically up sample the 20 meter bands. So I'm going to go into environments beforehand and make some changes. So we're going to make sure it spits the output out in whatever projection the original data is or are. So, um, so this is UTM zone 32 north, and then reference against the WDS84 datum. Okay, um, the extent, we'll just set that to the same extent as the, the, um, as the input data. We really don't need to do that. We'll have the snap to the data, which again, we probably don't need to do that either, but I'll just make it align with the original. For building pyramids, let's just change the method to bilinear. For resample, I'm going to change the resampling method to bilinear. I generally don't like to use nearest for um, for image data, and that should be good enough. So we'll go in here, and then I want to change the name of this. Let's just go back to that data folder, RS data, and then videos. And I'm just going to save out here and open. So we're going to call this Zurich S2 for Sentinel-2, and then I'm going to use the date, so it'll be 10, 12, 2018. There we go. Okay, so that looks good. So let's do a save there. And now let's run it. Oh, didn't like that. Oh, that's right, because this is... I, if, if I save it in as a grid, it's can't. That's too long of a name. So I'm going to put a dot. We'll just use an image. So we'll do dot img. So erdas imagine format, which doesn't have the uh, file name length restrictions. All right, cool. So now let's do a run and let this thing stack up. Um, this can take a little bit of time. I mean, this is actually a fairly large image. It's 10 by 10 meter pixels. Um, just as a side, some side notes why this is running, the, the band, the names are actually pretty useful here. So, for example, we've got the year, the month, and the date kind of as part of the band name, and also, like, the tile that it's, that it's part of in, like, the unique ID, and then the band number. So, they're really good about how they name their data. It's actually, if you know how to read this, you can figure out, you know, where it is and what the, the collection date and whatnot was. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here while this is running. There's no point in just watching this run. And then when I come back, we'll, um, we'll look at just visualizing the data. All right, so now we have an output, um, of a, which is a multi-band or, or multi-spectral image. And again, we accomplish that by just simply compositing the bands that we wanted. So before we move on, let's just look at some of the... Um, data or, inf or metadata about this band stack that we made. So I'm going to go into properties for this new layer and then source and have a look at the information. So we can see where it's located on my disk, the data type, the file name, vertical units. Um, this is the number of rows and columns of the data, the, the dimensions. So uh, there's 10, 10 by 10 and there's 10 bands. And we can see it's an 8-bit unsigned short 
data type and it has pyramids generated and then we have metadata for the bands it may not have actually calculated those I guess yet yeah, um, we have statistics for the bands so you can see the the range of values minimum to maximum the mean the standard deviation on a band by band basis the spatial extent relative to the um, projection and then the spatial reference information so we've got it's basically in UTM 32 north and again you see the units are in meters and then yeah so that's just about the projection and then that's the the datum WGS 84 datum okay so that all looks reasonable um, let's zoom in here just so we can kind of see the detail so this is a fairly detailed image. I mean, it's not really high resolution. It's kind of your high-end moderate resolution. It's a little higher res than Landsat, which is you know, 30 by 30 meters. Um, but it looks pretty good. So let's now play around with changing the band combinations, and that'll be the main focus of, of this video. All right, so to do the band change band combinations, you want to be clicked on the layer you're interested in. So we're cl clicked on our multi-band image there. And then you navigate to the Appearance tab. A bunch of options will pop up. So what we're going to look at is band combinations. OK, so there's some default. Um, what we're going to do is make some custom ones. So we're going to click on Custom. So when you make a... Um, band composite. Um, you can change the name. So I'm going to just call this S2, tr uh, we'll just call this S2 True Collar. And right now it's kind of reversed. So the red should is showing, well, actually, never mind, it is correct. So um, this is basically a true collar composite. So red is red, green is green, blue is blue. So I'm just going to add that just so I have it. There we go. So that looks good, right? So we have a standard kind of true color composite there. Kind of looks like how we would perceive the landscape. Let's do a cu another custom one, and we'll call this S2 standard FC for a false color. So now we want to do red as near infrared. So remember this is blue, green, red. Then we have our three, um, our three red edge. So that means that seven should be our near infrared band. And then our green should be mapped to red, which is layer three. And our blue should be mapped to green, which is layer two. So let's do add there. There we go. So it looks like your kind of standard false collar composite, right? So our vegetated areas show up as red there because they're reflecting a lot of the near infrared. Yeah, let's zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see the detail there. Okay, so that's your standard false collar composite. And let's just add one more. We'll do. Um, S2, and then we'll say, we'll just call it false collar 2. I don't really know a good name for this. So another common um, symbology is to do the short wave to red. So we'll just use 10. And then the green will show the near infrared, which again was 7. And then blue will show green, which will move to 2. So let's add that. There we go. So this is a really common composite you see for Sentinel data and then also Landsat data. So it really does a good job of you know highlighting the water versus the developed and or barren areas that look kind of this purple color, and then the obviously the green areas which are generally your your vegetation, right? Um, so let's for a second let's think about why this looks the way that it does. So why in this case is vegetation showing up as green? Well, so remember it, we are ha mapping, our band mapping here is red is short wave, green is near infrared, and blue is green. So vegetation is going to tend to absorb a good bit of the short wave and the 
and the green, so that means it's mainly going to be dominated by the green collar, which is shown in the NIR reflectance, right? Um, in contrast, these like developed areas, they're going to be reflecting a lot more of the shortwave infrared radiation, which gives them this kind of pink collar. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's kind of the idea there. It does a good job of differentiating um, surface materials. Okay, and then lastly, if we want to um, switch between these band combinations, then now that we've created them, it's really simple. You can just click on this drop down here and just click on it and it'll switch it back. And we can switch between our different band combinations. Okay, so there we go. That's our standard. Um, those are some uh, band combinations here in, in Arc Pro. So we're going to end this one here, and then in the next video, we're going to look at some other just visualization enhancements.